I don't really know what joke to crack to start, so let's get busy. In this video, I will show you, obviously, uh, that's a joke, to actually model this bottle. We will start in this exercise actually first with taking a photo of the existing object. And then we'll talk about how we can take photos so we kind of like can create usable reference images, bring those into Fusion, create all the necessary cross sections, and then use actually the loft command to create all the sections, stitch everything, and then fill it and shell the design. Amazing, no? Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's get going. Let's talk for a moment about how we should photograph an object so we can generate reference images which we could use kind of like as a loose guide when modeling over. So here you see a set of various images. When you would like to photograph an object, so we can put it into a CAD program, kind of like here to then trace over. It's really important that you try to photograph the object from as far as possible. So this is the image which we will load into Fusion, but this is actually how far I was away. Plus you see I'm using actually the, the tele lens. I'm not going to use the wide angle lens. Um, and I will show you actually why. So the main reason is the further we are away and the more we can zoom in, the less perspective distortion or foreshortening we have. Because it's a three dimensional object, it's not an image. Let's go back to this image here. We can see here this is slightly arched. Now, this is not horizontal. And also here, while this is at this, uh, the midpoint of the bottle, we can see that the front part of the bottle comes towards us while well, it's a three dimensional object. So when we um, actually try to photograph it, I have here a film. So this is where I start. Now, when I slowly get closer with the tele lens, pay attention to how this and this part changes its character. So when I'm getting closer and closer and closer, you can notice how this actually becomes more and more round. Here it actually, it was nearly like a line. So let's, let's watch this one more time. Okay, and then I will switch to the normal lens and there you can really see that this looks really round and just for giggles I also do this with the white lens I mean this is totally distorted so I hope that this basically already gives you a good idea why you want to use a tail lens and then still not really get very close. Try to shoot it from as far as possible. With the ruler here, we can still see enough information to establish later a scale in Fusion. Also, when you photograph it, try to really frame it well. So nicely centered. And for example, you don't want to shoot it from far left or far right, because then again, it's perspectively distorted up or down or just for giggles now you don't want to shoot down at an angle because this is kind of pointless okay so with this rule basically then you can create an image like this which then for fusion i crop down to this and there you can see this is still slightly arced but it is nearly flat for the top two, I photograph straight down, but you see the difference between these two images here is again, I'm using actually the orientation marker. The camera is slightly rotated, so it's not looking perpendicular straight down. Here it does, and ideally the, the bottle should be, or the object should be perfectly centered. Because even here, 
when I go down, you can see how, for example, the ring and everything perspectively changes the proportion. You see now how close this is from further away. It doesn't look that way. No perspective for shortening with photography. And then when you have a caliper or a ruler, very useful then to take some basic measurements. Yeah, and this is basically the process then how I created this image from a distance and cropped and also this image from a distance and cropped. Okay, now since that is covered, uh, let's go to Fusion and bring the two reference images in it. Now it's time to bring the images in. We will start with the front image. So we go to front view, then we go insert and canvas where we have the file downloaded and where is actually our front for fusion. Yep, that's the front one. And then we click on this yellow plane and there's our bottle. The bottle we can flip vertically and horizontally. Actually, no, click OK, that's it. We have to calibrate it now, so to scale. Go to Canvases, right-click, Calibrate, and on the next step is important. We click, let's say, on this end of this mark, and then we click on this end. So not there, because then it would be a diagonal. This is a straight line. And this reads out 30 point whatever millimeters. This is one inch, now it's zero, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven inches. There we are. Okay, so now the image has the correct scale. Now, after that, we can go ahead and try to position it correctly. So we can eyeball this a little bit, bring this up, now the lower part of the ruler is kind of like centered to the side of this bottle. So this edge, I can actually line up there. And you see how this sticks out. And again, this is a perspective photo. This cannot be used as a perfect cut section of the bottle. This image, when we put it down, is more used to be suggestive, not to be 100% being traced. Okay, how do we now figure out left and right? We can actually zoom in and then see so one, two, three, half cube, one, two, three, half cube. Yeah, okay. Um, but then I can see here, this is a little bit different. So this looks like at 50%, 50%, that is better. And also notice that here and here, you can see the diagonal line of my bottle is actually crossing the, the grid pretty well. If I go to somewhere else, I have the same here, but not there. Hmm. So maybe the image is, I photographed the image a little bit from the left side to the right side, or maybe we can rotate this a tick half a degree. Ah, oh, look at that. That actually nearly, nearly fixed it. So now this can go a tick over. So this nearly is perfect. One, two, three, one, two, three. This is actually really close. Oh, yeah, well, it's actually really good. Now we can bring this down and there we are. Cool. So that image now is positioned. And if we want, we could create a sketch on this plane and I will start simply somewhere here with a line. I assume this might end down here. You see this is arced, so this comes up and then go straight up and then this is kind of like a foil that fills it. Very good. The line is vertically constrained. Then we can add the dimension. 23 is good. I would like to know how high is this point? Go to the right side. 185 feels good. How far from the center is this away? 
You see again, you have to be careful where you move your mouse to. 17 millimeters. 17 multiplied by 2. 3.4. That's actually really good. So, 34. Fun fact, actually, in German, we wouldn't say 34.78. We would say 4 and 30, period 8 and 70. Exactly. Actually, really fun is when you learn French. Google it. it will be, you will love how French actually say 3,951 or something. It's really like a mathematical equation. Good, so the sketch is done. Then let's go to surface and revolve. Uh, we get an error message here. Profile, that's our profile and axis. And that is this one. Good. Yeah, yeah we feel like that looks good. For the moment, we can hide this. So how do we continue? We, uh, I did a photo of this part. And the photo we have, the um, 2.5 close fusion to top there. Okay, very good. Now we can go back to fusion. And at this height, I would like to have that photo positioned. So offset plane. From here, we go up. We can see how high should this be. One, let's say 138 feels good. Very nice. So on this, we will now position another canvas. And this time, top fusion there. Also here, simply click OK, all good. We need to calibrate it. So ideally, top view, that's the best one. There we can see the edges of the image. And we have the dimension here too. 3 and 60, uh, period 6 and 30. And such a... I so often mess up the number order. It's, it's quite hilarious. I'm in the US since 15 years. That still happens. So 63, let's say 64 or 62. Good. Okay. So calibrate. And then now we can zoom in and along the Y line that looks the best. We say 63 millimeters. Good. Okay. Now, before I continue, I'm actually going in front and going to create on this a sketch. And then I rotate the sketch. Uh, sorry, not rotate. Um, then create a circle and then inc I increase it and go to. Rectangle center and say 63, 63. Very good. So you see, it's, it's kind of like a, a box. Ideally, the image should fit into it. Now, the ring I can scale down to pay attention to is, for example, that other element photographed so it's centered. Not 100%. So we can see the image is actually a tick too high. Because the canvas is after the sketch, if I now go and say edit canvas, you can see the sketch in the background. No, if I would have made the sketch after I inserted the canvas, you see the sketch is gone because it doesn't exist yet. We're editing this one. Okay, so we can either try to see if we can use the circle as a helper. Yeah, that looks close, close. Tick further down. Yeah, that's actually kind of okay, good. 
what does this actually read out? Radius 22, so diameter 44. Uh huh. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so this we can delete. And now, at the same construction plane, we create a new sketch. Top view, because now I would like to trace this flow. It's actually a really nice transition. So we have um, kind of like these arcs and arcs and arcs and arcs. And this can be very easily drawn by the fit point curve. So click, 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 and click. Now what I need to do is make sure that all these points are horizontal vertically and diagonally in, in a symmetry. So I will add myself a little cross in the center. And then both lines, gee, there, I will turn into construction lines. And at least this one has to be vertically and no, not the handle, but the point has to be horizontally aligned to there. Good. So because now when I do this, you see U to U, symmetry to here, it puts it onto the X axis and also left and right. That's good, no? Then U, U to here, very nice. Good, and then one, two, to here. One, two, to this one. One, two, to this one. Now let's see, yep, there we are, very good. So these diagonals are actually perfect. Mm, here they all actually wobble independently. So how can we fix this? We do this via dimension. So sketch dimension U to U and 32. Okay. And then U to U. I click this 32 too, and you see that's then a D8, so dimension H. So when I change this to 30, both dimensions update. And because we gave a dimension, but the, uh, the symmetry constraint makes these two points symmetrical, and the horizontal constraint makes this point horizontal to here, they all stay horizontal and left and right perfectly in symmetry. Good. Then we can maybe move this one out and see, can we, can we get this into position? But I want this also to be kind of like 45 degree. So in this case here, yeah, we have to draw at least a line. And then this line to here, D. 45 degrees, and then this we make a construction. So now the point can also via M moved along 45 degree and perfectly flows. Yeah, very nice. 32. Yeah. Okay, and if we want this, we can actually give it a, give a dimension 36, make it nice and clean. Good, yeah. So there we have actually now our our profile. Let's take a look. Wow, even from here you see this is pretty, pretty spot on. So how are we then going to build this and this? Well, this are actually two two more profiles, which can be, um, yeah, hand drawn or since this is finished, we will project it down and shrink it. Then every time when I change the top profile, the other profiles will follow. Here I'm building top down, I could also bottom up have built it. 
another construction. Let's see. That looks like 40. Very good. I hide all my uh, images, new sketch on this, and then we project this down. Okay. And now I need just to figure out, okay, how much do I have to offset this to the inside? Yeah, that looks pretty good. 3.25. Very nice. Yeah. Finish sketch. And then one sketch on the bottom, not vertical. And also here I will go project from the top down. That's nice and clean. Oh, looks like that might even be be it. Actually, let's make this a, a millimeter bigger. Minus one to the outside. By the way, you see it says minus one, but it goes to the outside. We also have a flip command here. And basically, if I go to there or there, that defines always the the direction. So the minus does not necessarily all, only means it goes to the inside or so. Good. There we are. So we want to make sure is that this projected line, we press X or go to here. So it's a nice construction line. And here in this sketch X2, I'm just double clicked on this element. So we have all the cross sections, bottom, mid and top. And actually, we also have here, the start of the neck. And now we can create the transitional surfaces. So we go to loft, one, two, three, hey, can actually even go to there. But is this really what we want? Let's take a look. And there we can see that while this is a nice and beautiful loft surface that goes through all the profiles, we actually just want a surface that is linear. So how do we do this? It's actually pretty easy. Because all we have to do is go in steps. Right click and repeat right click and repeat. And there we are. There. Now we can patch the top and right click, repeat, patch the bottom, select everything, stitch. Nice. Now we have a solid, then we can go to solid command, fill it. This we could turn into five plus select this one, 10 plus this one is going to be tricky. It's very small. So 50 plus here we go five. We go with tangent G1. It's very easy uh, and fast to calculate. It's actually not necessarily the perfect result because this is a, a circle to a bent transition. You can see how these lines are actually changing a little bit. But for what we try to do here right now, this is perfect. So then let's click on OK. And there we are. Then we can go to shell, two millimeters. OK, let's take a look inside. There we are. Perfect. So now out of just um, horizontal profiles using the loft, we created a linear transition. And as you can see, the um, loft command is also pretty nice to create a blend between two very different shapes. So for example, this rather rounded rectangle with soft edges, making a blend to this perfect circle. Yeah, and that's it.